You know what my favorite thing is? War. You know what my favorite temperature is? Slightly breezy. And you know what my favorite hobby is? Listening to old Russian pop music. And my second favorite is video games. But there aren't actually that many video games about the Cold War. Let's get strategy out of the way first. World in Conflict is a real-time strategy game from 2007. The game features a Cold War Gone Hot story taking place in 1989, in which Lieutenant Parker has to defend America against a Soviet-led land invasion after the US deployed most of its forces to Europe after NATO gets attacked by the Warsaw Pact. Gameplay-wise, the game features standard RTS gameplay. It also has a DLC where you can play as the invading Soviet forces, as well as a community-run multiplayer that's still alive today. Terminal Conflict is a grand strategy game set during the Cold War. You probably never heard of this game before. In it, you control either the USA or the Soviet Union, and you have to influence various feeders around the world and recruit leaders to your cause to win. It's done by the people behind Hearts of Iron East vs West. And if you don't know what that is, keep watching. War Game Design Studios Modern Campaign. So if you're like me and have never heard of computer tabletop wargaming, you might be really confused at what you are looking at right now. So let's just call it Hearts of Iron 4, but epic. War Game Design Studio has multiple tabletop war games, these being North German Plane 85, Danube Front 85 and Fulda Gap 85, simulating a Cold War gone hot in Eastern Germany. I just want to point out again that I'm a Hearts of Iron 4 zoomer and windows opening while I'm playing my video games scare me. Combat Mission Cold War is a very interesting game, looking like it was made in the 90s, then forgotten about for 3 decades and then unceremoniously dumped on Steam. It's another tabletop wargame descent, which in my games just means very complicated Hearts of Iron but this time it's a turn-based RTS strategy type of game. But instead of being turn-based, I go and then you go, it's a we go system. Which means both players enter their orders and then have to watch what happens. From the reviews, it seems that due to the game being on an actual engine from 2007, the game has pretty bad performance. But there seems to be a cult following for these games, so I genuinely hope that they do not find this video. Warno is a real-time strategy game developed by Eugen Systems, also known as the creators of Wargame Red Dragon and Steel Division, that in the 1980s Europe, this game tackles a Cold War Gone Hot scenario, where the player assumes command of various factions, taking part in this alternate history conflict. This game features both a solo and multiplayer mode. For the solo mode, the player can choose to play skirmishes or the army general campaigns, similar to the ones in Steel Division. The game features a large variety of units, both for the Warsaw Pact and NATO, each faction having its own strengths and weaknesses, putting the player in the position to take advantage of the units at hand. In the multiplayer, the player engages in RTS skirmishes against other players, this can range from 1v1 battles to as many as 10v10. Overall, Warno is an ambitious RTS game that receives updates and is planned to feature new DLCs to include new units and operations to play and truly makes you feel like being an army commander in the third world war. Thanks again Alex from Twitter for covering this game that I bought back in December and poured a whopping 13 minutes into. Black Ops Cold War is a video game that I unfortunately own. It's your typical COD slot really. Campaign is set in the 1980s where you play as Bell, a spoiler, Soviet agent captured and brainwashed into believing himself to be a Vietnam vet, where you have to work together with Adler to stop Perseus, a Soviet spy, trying to make the Cold War go hot. Honestly, the only interesting part about this game is that once Bell learns the truth, you can join Adler to be the good guy and stop Perseus from nuking Europe or join Perseus and nuke Europe and blame the Americans for it. That's pretty much all there is to it, it's, it's not a very interesting game. Speaking of Call of Duty, Black Ops, the original, the good one, is also set during the Cold War, you should play that instead. Rising Storm 2 is the funny Vietnam multiplayer game, set during the Vietnam War, which was part of the Cold War, so there you go. Sadly, the game is at that part of a multiplayer only game's life cycle, where you need to check the player count to see if you're allowed to play. Arma Reforger is the newest entry in the Arma series. It's more multiplayer focused and in general more of a test for the Arma 4 engine. It's set during a Cold War Gone Hot scenario, 
So if you, like me, want a milsim with cold raw material, get this. It also features a game master mode which is like the editor from Armor 3 but worse. Speaking of armor, Armor Cold War Assault, also known as Operation Flashpoint Cold War if you're a code master in 2001, is the first armor title. Yes, even before Armor Armed Assault. It was made by Bohemia, the guys behind the armor series and published by Coldmaster in 2001. The two then had a little fight and went their separate ways, with Bohemia going on to make the first armor game. But then in 2011, they released Flashpoint as Armor Cold War, thus retconning it as the first armor game, or something like that. The game's set in the 1980s and features three campaigns, Cold War Crisis, Red Hammer and Resistance. Gameplay-wise, it's what you'd expect from a Bohemia Muslim from 2001. Metal Gear Solid 3, I do not think that this game is any introduction. Snake Eater takes place in the 1960s during the Cold War in Russia. This is one of the best games ever, so I'm not gonna spoil anything here. It has a remake coming out soon and I hope that Konami does not fuck this up. Pretty good. Phantom Doctrine is a turn-based spy game set during an alternative Cold War, where brainwashing is actually real. Cold War the video game is a Splinter Cell inspired stealth game set in 1986, where Matthew Carter, a freelance journalist, is sent to a Moscow prison camp after he tried to stop a secret organization from taking over the Soviet Union. And now he has to escape and stop the secret organization before he is sent to a Siberian prison camp. Cold Waters is a submarine sim set in the Cold War, that's pretty much it. Espicocracy is an upcoming grand strategy game set during the Cold War. Unlike games like Hearts of Iron, in this game, espionage takes a major role where you have to influence other nations from the shadows to win the Cold War. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really really excited for this game because it looks really good. Arma 3 has a East German army and a Czech Cold War DLC that adds material from that era to the editor and a bunch of missions as well. Hearts of Iron 4 has the Cold War Iron Curtain mod, a total overhaul that sets the game from 1949 till 1970. This is probably the best Cold War mod you're gonna get and it's super well made. East vs West, a Hearts of Iron game, was supposed to be a spin-off similar to Darkest Hour. It would be based off of 3 and thus play similarly, albeit with added stuff like a doomsday clock, a new espionage system, expanded politics and a nuclear arms race. The game was cancelled in 2014, but we have a lot of gameplay, as well as a leaked beta from 2013 that you can still find today. Ostalgie and Crisis in the Kremlin were both made by Kremlin Games, a studio that focuses on making Cold War video games. While Crisis in the Kremlin sets you up as General Secretary of the Soviet Union, where you have to manage to save the USSR and win the Cold War via politics, Ostalgie lets you play as any Warsaw Pact country in 1989, allowing you to try and have your favorite communist nation flourish during the near end of the Cold War. And that's it, there's probably a few or maybe many games that I missed, but the Cold War seems to be a very niche topic, only explored in very niche video games. It's a shame because the Cold War features, in my opinion, some of the most interesting conflicts as well as arsenal developments from all of the modern war periods. I hope you enjoyed this and thanks again to Alex for helping me with this video. Be love, be love, be love, be love.